Happy Valentine's Day. We are all supposed to burst into laughter and cheer. Are we not? Happy Valentine's Day. You, you know it's a conspiracy by Utkarsh Lokesh and his team to hold this session on Valentine's Day because he and his cohorts thought that we from education are actually not young at heart and we don't respond in big burst of laughter and cheer when we say happy Valentine's Day. So he's going to be successful. Is true? No. And, 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 and there is the second one. We are not young at heart and therefore we don't adopt technology that fast. That's another accusation. You're all from education, right? Yeah. Education implementers, right? Same here. Mr. Prabodh, are you with me? When you are with me, you should disagree with me then. Yes. <laughs> All of us. Uh, actually, I was, I was actually talking to Utkarsh Lokesh in London uh, very recently, a couple of, years, uh, couple of uh, weeks back. And then I thought he's going to handle this entire event right from there. He was refusing to leave London. And he continued to be in London. He was communicating with us. And I thought this guy is, is going to handle the entire summit from London itself. So I asked him yesterday, uh, when did you return? He said he, he returned long back. Actually, he was posting old uh, memories of London much later. He was a bit lazy, I think. Friends, uh, this presentation is going to be a very, very normal, simple presentation and a reflection of what you already know. And I would like to keep it very simple. It's like uh, it helps us pause for a while and understand where we are broadly uh, to get the drift of uh, our own position with respect to edtech and edtech as a concept. And uh, in, uh, in my effort to de-jargonize the whole thing, and I have uh, very consciously tried to remove the jargon from my presentation, wherever I find jargon, uh, uh, inadvertently creeping in, I'll skip that slide and you can also let me know. Uh, but this is just a small, simple, uh, pause, pause on kind of talk that uh, we would like to have today. Are you ready? So I borrowed this picture from uh, a magazine that is published recently and it says, at tech, no thank you. Is that true? All of us uh, are very happy talking about at tech because it is quite fashionable. And uh, it sounds great that you are well informed and you know about technology and edtech is the buzzword, like the way we talk about artificial intelligence. You know, a lot of us talk about artificial intelligence and many other things that we are going to actually dwell upon. But adopting edtech has not been that great a scenario in schools and colleges and universities. Uh, compared to the world over, compared to our own country, I think the percentages are very less and the kind of depth that we have gone into it is actually not very encouraging. While we are all aware of it, we know and we talk about it, uh, perhaps it is, it, it is not adopted that well. I think that is true. Why is it true that people don't actually adopt, but they are fully aware of it and they are very good at talking about it? Is it in a way that we romanticize with technology and, and end it there? Uh, the ed tech providers who are also vendors, perhaps one of the reasons for them is to behave in a different manner because they are not totally supporting us, the education institutions with respect to implementation. They have half-baked solutions or solutions which are designed outside the realms of educational institutions perhaps. Is implementation support a shortage? We'll have to think about it. As I said, this is for us to raise a few questions and see whether all of us can come together, the educators as well as the founders of ed tech companies should come and, and then uh, resolve such issues uh, if it is. And the accusation on the ed tech players is that, you know, a lot of products are designed outside, uh, I mean, in, in isolation without even consultation with the educators. For example, I have a hammer and all I am looking for is a nail. I think that is also prevalent to a large extent in a dominant way and that is one of the reasons why adoption is affected. And in terms of institutions, uh, people who are adopting technology are very unsure of what are the returns on investment and therefore there is a, there is a great doubt over there. And also they have tried a few things and it didn't work because it, they didn't quite see the success rate, therefore they are fatigued. I think the fatigue is also responsible for 
not adopting further any deep uh, technology in terms of learning and teaching and, that, uh, and, and that's what I was trying to say in the beginning. Who are the skeptics? Parents and teachers agreed? Okay, parents? Teachers are here, so we will blame it on parents. <laughs> and, and, and I spoke to a lot of parents and I, lost, I spoke to teachers as well. Parents and teachers are most important uh, stakeholders. Therefore, whether they are the adopters or skeptics, it has to be both of them. So the blame has to be uh, on these two sets of people and not anybody else. Building awareness with respect to parents is important because they are going to pay for the incremental cost of adopting a tech. Allowing children to actually spend more time for learning on a tech platforms and not stick to the traditional methods of school and private tuitions, but you know, go forward with respect to technology because that's where it is. And pay awareness to uh, awareness building is something which we have to do one on one in meetings and sessions and workshops and conferences rather than of course supplementary information can go through apps and and other devices that we have of course people agree with me yeah happy teachers day <laughs> and we need to also in order to have a proliferation of ed tech penetrating into various uh, segments I think tier 2, tier 3 cities also will have to be taken into consideration and cost is an issue which someone has raised just now but that is a very important area to actually have a widespread acceptance. Now <clears throat> so teacher which is a very very important aspect here a few points that I have teachers shall continue to inspire to learn that there is no substitute to that and also continues to drive to learn without teacher those technologies which adopted uh, an approach where it replaces teacher have failed and it is going to fail and, and, and therefore fundamentally that, that kind of concept was misplaced. Therefore we need to realize that you know teacher is going to be centric to all these aspects. I am not saying teacher is the center of learning and teaching, I am saying teacher is centric to the process. Of course as technology is adopted it improves the uh, learning teaching process. A uh, lot of criticism with respect to certain schools and educational institutions is that when there is a need to change they really resist it and when they resist it it is also with the argument that there is actually no need to change. Well this, this is the very very important aspect that educators are accused of that we always bring up a counter argument that there is no need to change, things are going fine, learning outcomes are very good and, and, and the goals are met therefore there are no great uh, shakes when you, when you introduce new technology and you know. Uh, disrupt everything. Reading by reading alone it is not enough therefore we need to have a multi-sensory experience as somebody has explained just now my uh, good friend Supreet that experience creation or multi-sensory experience in, uh, in, in learning is only brought by uh, by the advent of technology. So technology is interesting. Now there was a company which approached uh, with, with certain uh, new tech and when new tech uh, guys come and discuss with us the question that I ask them is that have you discussed with any teachers? Is it developed with the help of any teachers or is it developed aside of teachers? To a large extent they develop the product and then they come for execution. In my view I think any product will be successful if the stakeholders are taken into confidence and it is developed alongside along with them. And the devices and the content that we have outside also we have lots of devices. Most of them are not suitable for Indian, uh, uh, the rural, semi-rural towns and other places where it's not uh, suitable. Even within metros like Bangalore or Hyderabad or Mumbai, Delhi, I think it is not suitable because of the tropical climate. I think the devices will have to be uh, carefully chosen and the content. Yes, content mapping to curriculum is very interesting and that is the advantage uh, if, if we can provide. Uh, with respect to everything that we choose, it is an ecosystem, it cannot be in isolation and therefore off the shelf content which is readily available in order to push their product and push their tech uh, they provide whereas it is completely bereft of the instructional design principles that we learn of or that we are actually trained with. The dust and heat is also not suitable for 
various uh, de uh, devices that we use in India. Therefore, it has to be designed for this country and we need to use those uh, devices. Understand what happens inside the classroom. I think this is the biggest challenge that anybody has faced. Even in higher education, a, a lot of us don't understand actually what happens inside the classroom because the teacher is the supreme authority in the classroom and we, we leave it there. I, I, and I think if it can be effectively captured, I think there is a solution for many uh, problems, not just at tech, but in terms of making the education itself very effective. Come back, uh, come back to the topic, there is a shortage of faculty and the excessive load on the people who are present and there is a time pressure. Therefore, these are the real challenges we need to understand when we design technology for teachers. You know all these things, the education evolution at stage one where the economic output was completely by human labor. From that stage, that Gurukul stage, the preliminary stage one, we have moved to stage two, which is industrial revolution where uh, <clears throat> machines have replaced human. And in stage three, I think the intelligent machines have replaced human effort. And therefore, I think uh, through, towards these three stages, we have understood that there is a necessity for applying technology for better outcomes. Now, there is a context as well. All of us understand the numbers here. I am not going to spend, I, there is some jargon here as well, so that's why I was skipping. How do we rapidly bring in improvement in education through collaboration? My friends have talked about collaboration, collaborative technology, collaborative learning, learning, teaching, as well as working and and, 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 and identifying paradigms of inventing new things. I think collaboration is the base word for all of us. It is the way of life for us. Therefore, it is a necessity. As I said, artificial intelligence is the off spoken. I think it's the buzzword. Everybody wants to talk about artificial intelligence. And uh, apart from using AI, I'll talk about some simple, simple uh, matters here. In order to make AI successful in a learning teaching environment, we have to standardize certain practices and there's a way in which the teacher will have to perform and, uh, and respond. And when you do that, you, you probably end up, it's a question mark again, you probably end up turning teachers into memorization and eventually trying to replace them with re robots. I mean, that's a, that's a loud thinking which I have, therefore I put it on the slide. If it is not built properly, I think uh, it is going to give you the results which are going to be narrow and, and, and therefore it will be only standardized, straight jacketed, bereft of any diversity. I think that is the danger we are going to fall into. Ah, this is another loud thinking point that I have. Are we going to develop second class robots uh, instead of focusing on first class uh, human beings in the name of AI? So AI actually theoretically and also in practice it is supposed to be a virtual loop which is, is going to help us evolve better, learn better, and the outcomes are supposed to be better and diverse. If we deal with AI better, I think the results will also be careful. So the edtech companies will have to be very, very careful uh, in shaping our future along the AI. AI is very huge across all sectors, and uh, from where it is currently, it is going to bounce into eight times of growth by the next five to six years. I think that's going to be a very, very huge revolution. And Education as an industry will be a, a large slice of this, this growth as AI applications are concerned. I was in London, as I said last time, and I was wearing a headset of uh, uh, augmented reality, and they showed me, as, as you all read the examples uh, of uh, you are you're taken into a park, and then you look at a monument, and then you click, and then it gives you the information. That's what is augmented reality. Now, now the question that I have is, can we add little bit of interactivity to augmented reality. This was Google booth I was in and then I was having some discussion. So the loud thinking point here is can we add social to it? Can we have interactivity over there? Can the person who is wearing the headset, can he talk because it's a device, mobile device connected to their portal or website and then I'm viewing it, I'm asked to turn left and right and I'm supposed to click there and can I speak into the device and when I speak into the device, can the device respond? Because Google is already the search king. And of course, my question is uh, some detail about when was this uh, um, carbon park constructed, for example? And then who was the person behind it? 
if I had similar questions in the search already asked by students of a previous class or a previous year, then it can throw up ready answers. It can, it can actually throw up answers in the audio format or it can throw up answers in the text format. I think those interactivities, those disruptions further are very much possible theoretically at least. I think that's where the learning is going to be great fun if it is, uh, but without, without actually raising the cost drastically. Can we add social to it? Can we add interactivity to it? Can we, can we convert a traditional learning management system into a, a high powered learning management system like this? I think it is possible theoretically. While the conversation is going on across various students in the classroom or wherever they are, while they are interacting on a particular concept, can their faculty member also access and see what are the quality responses and assign marks and can instantly the feedback be given? I think that is also possible. Voice is majorly uh, creating uh, an impact uh, in the way we deal with technology these days. Uh, from normal Siri to Alexa kind of conversations that you have. Um, I think there is an organization which is based out of uh, Pune and, uh, and a research and uh, development team in London. They are working on a variety of software. One of the things that they discussed with me is that how do we work on amplification of voice, voice, voice capture, voice culturing and then converting that into multiple languages. The one thing that comes uh, immediately uh, to my mind is that there are multiple applications in uh, say politics. For example, Narendra Modi would like to speak in one uh, uh, session here and he would like to use the same thing without actually doing once again. Uh, a, a similar talk, but it would appear that he is speaking in all the other languages as well across the country just, just by you know, talking once from his studio. He is al already virtually talking for example, he is talking in Hindi and how the voice will be adapted to a Telugu language or, or a Malayalam uh, language and then those listeners who are listening to him in Malayalam would, get a, would not get even a doubt that it is not his voice, it's completely his voice. I think R&D is going on in this and, uh, and that's very, very important. In education, can a teacher who is teaching in one location make it accessible to a large number of students across with the same effectiveness, with the reputation that he has got and his voice has got, will it be made available for all the students for amplification of learning? That was the point. Gaming, I think we all blame it on uh, people like PUBG. You know PUBG? Yeah, PUBG is, uh, is very, very successful and dangerous and uh, there were other dangerous apps also in the past. But the learn, learning point for us is that uh, it's quite immersive, successfully immersive. I think if we have gaming done for education purpose in as interesting and as immersive as some of these apps are, I think kids are going to learn better and they're going to be uh, sticking to the web of sticking to the particular product and, and learning is going to be fun without actually making it very, very formal. Kind of challenges that we put up in games, I think it is going to be interesting and yeah. There's another organization which I recently uh, talked about. They scan your palm and they also uh, uh, print the lip like the way you, you print your, 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 your palm and then it will be fed into the system and they throw up kind of analytics which give you the profile of the students that you are going to get into your classroom and therefore you are helped into categorizing that into various uh, profiles of students. Say for example, seven, eight categories of students where there are strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and the requirements of learning and therefore customized solutions can be given to uh, those sets of students when they are segregated and again integrated back into the mainstream. I think there is R&D going on and this is going to be very interesting provided certain uh, difficulties are erased in its execution at the initial stages. I think this is going to also make news in the days to come. <clears throat> Some of the solutions that we have is that when this accusation that we are not adopting technology as far as education institutions are concerned, I think can we have our own alumni working on the executive councils of the schools and colleges. Can we have this concept because they are successful alumni, 
they will also be brought on to the executive council and they are going to bring down the average age and the decisions are going to be agile. We have, we have to learn to accept the alumni to govern the school and the institution. I think that change in mindset is going to be quite helpful and this is one humble suggestion that I have. Those institutes which have started adopting this have gone far ahead, not just in technology but in various other facets of learning and building the school and its contents. I think uh, young alumni should be brought on to the, alumni, uh, the executive council. And the way forward is we need to trust, collaborate and, and solve problems and display that the teaching community has got leadership within them. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity of uh, letting me speak here. Thank you the patient audience that you have spent your time with me. Thank you all.